Um, hi. Uh, I truly loved this movie, but was not prepared for it because I just was like, oh, it's a Christmas movie. Great. Uh, and started it last night and was not uh, a Christmas movie. And so I wanted to know, first of all, what kind of drew you into Silent Night in the first place? Well, exactly that reason that I started it. And it's like, if the movie had continued as it started, we'd all have enjoyed it as well. I mean, it was a well-written, great, cozy, funny, familiar Christmas film. And then I thought it was so unexpected and so exciting. And um, the shift, you know, although very dark. And um, I thought the themes and the the sort of bigger ideas in the film were so interesting and um and I love that it sort of somehow despite this sort of major twist sort of sort of still maintained some of the comedy you know although a sort of darker version than what we started off with yeah and when did you guys film this movie we actually started shooting it just before the pandemic. Okay. And it was, so that was a really extraordinary experience because we kind of all arrived on set and sort of the first week we were shooting, we didn't, nothing, it was in the news, but no one was talking about coro the coronavirus, the, you know, no one was saying like, you know, and then the second week it was sort of, oh, a bit of a joke, like, and then the third we were going, oh, is anyone a bit like, and as it sort of got closer and closer towards lockdown, we got shut down and two days later, the whole country got locked down. Um, it got scarier and scarier. And I was on the phone with my partner and my son who were in the States going, get on a plane, come over. Cause I'm, you know, I don't know if think, you know, they came over just in time before, you know, the borders shut. And um, so it was very, very dramatic and bizarre to be doing a film about a global crisis in the middle of a global crisis. Yeah, and it was really interesting because I was watching and I was like, with how the climate is in America, I was like, what is going? And then I realized, I'm like, wait, they may have probably made this movie way before anything actually was going on. And so it's very yeah. interesting watching it. It's uh, so interesting because it feels so timely and all the things it sort of brings up are sort of very pertinent. And I know um, Camille Griffin, the di writer director, I was talking to her and she was like going, she's sort of been a bit tired of people saying, is it like an anti-vax film or, you know, a sort of, she's like, I, this was before, you know, this is not, it's, that's not, but it's, it's still, it's kind of interesting that it was, feels so timely that it sort of, it's brought up so much, so much stuff and so many talking points and feels so relevant. Mm -hmm. And listen, you can, uh, oh, I know, oh no, I don't want to get in spoilers. So I can't say what I was going to say about the end of yeah. this. Episode. Um, but it's really interesting because I like Bella as a character because everyone else kind of like their priorities are their families, their families, their families. And Bella at one point even says, she's like, oh, just because I don't have kids and kind of like yeah. uh, brushes back at them. And so I wanted to know when you're approaching a character like that, even though like you yourself have a son, uh, do you, how do you get the inspiration behind like those angry moments of like her trying to fight back with her friends and like how they view her life? Well, I thought it was like, it felt very, what I liked is it was sort of the, they're close enough friends that they're sort of like family and so there's that bickery dynamic when you love and you know these people so well that it's sort of it's very easy you go like you do with your family and then it's all fine again because it's family and that that was the same dynamic with their French their in the friendship but also you know the tensions are high in this film so you know everyone's fearful and everyone's um on edge um so sort of uh sort of balancing that in a sort of a sort of a sort of funny character and a sort of movie with sort of funny elements with this sort of impending sort of crisis that sort of that sort of that, that's coming up yeah and uh I want to know like when filming as because obviously you guys got shut down so you had to come back at some point was it cathartic because I found it very cathartic watching like as an actor playing these characters when they have the moments of just 
we're going to pretend nothing's going on. We're going to dance and have fun and have dinner um, within a movie that has those very hard hitting scenes where they're all having these conversations that they don't want to be having. Yeah, I loved, I loved, I mean, it was really fun shooting those scenes. We did them for like, and, it, and completely exhausting. And it was sort of, and it would, we were kind of ourselves getting more and more manic and tired as it was like kind of, the, and as we kept on shooting it, but it really felt, I loved how it has been edited. They've been edited into the film because it, it, they feel absolutely desperate and sort of more, maybe not more, there's sort of like, you know, intercut with sort of like horror and reality, but just the desperation of blocking out what's happening with sort of alcohol and dancing and trying to have fun. And it just feels like they are, you know, it's sort of like this sort of manic energy before everything disintegrates. So I, I love that bit of the, the movie. And I, I think that works really, really well. And with Bella, especially, she is one of the harder characters to read in this movie because everyone else is not cut and dry, but you can kind of get their whole personality within this. Yes. Um, how much of that was like you approaching this character in the way that you did and how much of it was like written in the script of uh, Bella's backstory? Well, she was sort of supposed to be this... Uh... I mean, she doesn't quite fit in. I mean, she hasn't sort of like, she's not a parent when, you know, and she's sort of um, a, a bit of an oddball and sort of like the kind of the funny one who is sort of like a laugh and Bella's funny and just, and sort of inappropriate. And I, lo I love those characters that are sort of, and sort of, but actually rather sort of tragic. And, you know, she's sort of actually very lonely and fearful. And, you know, there was more stuff um, as always happens that, you know, not everything makes it into the film, but, you know, there were sort of, you know, more stories about her sort of feeling sort of not, like she quite fitted in with everyone and not, you know, a, a part um, of sort of, you know, certain friendships. And um, it was, uh, I mean, to be honest, it was all sort of there on the page. The, the Our writer director, Camille Griffin wrote, you know, all these characters, they were, you know, you just knew who everyone was immediately. Um, and um, I thought it was, you know, you sort of got the sense she was terribly fearful. And then she does sort of at the end, her version of a very brave act, which is sort of, I don't, again, don't want to give it, but she's sort of like, she thinks she's saving her girlfriend from pain and horror by doing what she does at the end. Um, and although it's completely misguided. So I kind of like that she had a sort of moment, a sort of more heroic moment at the end where she sort of seems to sort of like, you know, sort of slightly peripheral and weak and a bit scared. And then, um, yeah, she sort, of, she sort of redeems herself somewhat. Yeah, and I like that moment because it is also manic in a way too. Like, like her yeah. reaction is fits in with everyone else's reaction of like, I'm panicking and I don't know what else to do kind of thing. Yeah. But yes. it worked really well. Um, I would like to ask this as like a wrap up question. What do you hope audiences take away from Silent Night when they get to see it this holiday season? Well, I hope they really enjoy it. I hope they laugh. I hope, but I hope it makes them think. I think, you know, something that was so, so interesting to me because we were shooting at the same time of the pandemic and this real thing of none of us were taking it seriously. The it was, it was like a mat, like five or six weeks as no one in the world was, we could have had no idea. Yeah, I was that was in this world, so I, yeah. <laughs> no one was. And so I think this is about a sort of environmental global crisis that we can't see. We don't, it's not there. It's it, and like the pandemic, you, you we don't see this virus. And so I hope that, you know, the bigger idea behind this is sort of wake up and before it's too late. And just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it's a real threat. And I think that's, um, uh, you know, and it seems like what I love is that the children in the film are smarter than the adults and are, are holding them accountable and saying, you screwed this up for us. This is your fault. 
And um, it is, and we do have to wake up and step up because that sort of really more than anything is the, the most sort of like extreme threat that we're dealing with right now. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm excited for people to see it. I think it's going to be very interesting watching people watch it and then realize that this was written before everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I love the movie and it was great talking to you. You too. Thank you, Rachel. Thanks.